What's up everybody? It's Andy Nduka coming to you again with another Mavs draft video. And tonight I was thinking about going through some mock drafts and kind of giving my thoughts and reactions and opinions about some publications and who they have drafting or who they have the Mavericks drafting at 26. So what I'll do is I'll go through a couple of my uh, go through a couple of mock drafts, uh, look at the selections, look to see who was available uh, at the time they had the Mavericks pick, and to see will I agree with that pick or will I possibly go with another direction. Uh, of another player who is available at 26. So buckle up, strap in, and let's get ready for this ride. So the first article I have tonight is uh, by Yahoo Sports. It's Zach Hanshu. This one was done Wednesday, June 8th. Now I'm recording this on Friday, June 10th. So this article isn't too old, which is, that's kind of like the target I was looking for. I didn't want any super old articles and and so probably two to three days old so that the intel hopefully the intel hasn't changed in so much that all this uh data is is pretty much not right anymore but let's see who mr hanshu has a maverick selecting at 26. now he has dallas maverick selecting bryce mcgowan's at 26 uh nebraska guard uh six seven so uh, if you guys didn't take a look already, I actually did a video about potential draft picks uh, that the Mavericks might draft at 26. Um, I did about 14 or 15 prospects, something like that. It's a 45 minute video. And I tiered them based on how excited will I be if the Mavericks were to select a certain uh, prospect. Bryce McGowan was one of the guys I looked over and did some research on, and um, he kind of fell on my tier three, which is those are the guys that I would be, uh, I would need to sell myself on, as in I'll need to watch some YouTube videos and some highlights and uh, do some, uh, you know, I guess research to see, uh, you know, what he was like, uh, what's his upside, kind of envision how he will be playing with Luca. And so I can kind of get my um, optimist, optimistic uh, uh, feels going. And so I can, you know, try to see how he will be at his absolute best playing alongside Luka Doncic. Now, the thing that worries me about Bryce is the defensive end. Um, while doing my research on Bryce, it was possibly one of the worst defensive tapes I've seen. I saw him get blown by a lot. I saw him do that thing that some guys do where uh, as soon as they get blown by, they'll try to back tap the ball, uh, which is a very risky move. You definitely give up your defensive integrity and completely uh, give up a lane to the basket if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you're not successful doing this move. And I saw him doing that a lot. And I do not like that as someone who's watched basketball, who's played basketball uh, essentially his whole life. I hate it when defensive players do that, not because uh, I mean, of course, when it's successful, it's awesome, it's cool, and it can lead to an, uh, a good fast break, but it works a very small percentage of the time um, to a point where I don't believe it's worth it. I would just rather have you just do your best and stay in position. Uh, so that's one of the things that gives me pause about uh, Bryce McGowan's being selected at 26. Who Now, who, according to this guy, who is uh, some potential names that we saw uh, that uh, that saw go later in his draft. Now, Christian Braun is a guy that I also uh, did some research on. Uh, he's a dude that you know I would I would like to see. He did fall in that I guess tier three, two, two. I can, can't quite remember, but he's a prototypical D and three guy, uh, which means um, he can, of course, contribute on both sides of the ball. Uh, he's a very he's six 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 seven so he can guard anywhere probably from one, one to three maybe one to four um on the offensive end uh very efficient with this three-point shooting however where he lacks is he's not uh he's not well versed in creating his uh for his own shot so you had he will very heavily have lean on someone like a Luca, lean on someone like a Jalen Brunson to create an offense for him. So he will be a catch and shoot type guy, which I think the Mavericks are good on. We have some good catch and shoot guys with Dorian Finney-Smith, 
with Reggie Bullock and with Maxi Kleba, can we find guys that are able to contribute on the defensive end, but also do more than just catch and shoot on the offensive end? Now, uh, that's what Christian Braun is. Um, Bryce McGowan is someone, at least on the offensive end, that can contribute more than just catch and shoot. He's he's okay at that, but he's well versed in uh, getting to the basket, drawing fouls. Awesome. Again, the defense is what gives me pause. Let's go ahead and move on to the next draft uh, mock, at least. So this one is by the draft room. Don't quite know. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Don't quite know when this uh, mock draft was updated. But anyway, let's see who they have the Mavericks picking anyway. And they have the Mavs picking Kendall Brown. Kendall Brown's another dude I talked about in the video. Uh, very, uh, you know, high upside, uh, high ceiling. Um, what is what is what are we looking at? Year one is a project type guy, uh, dude who's uber athletic, uh, guy who's uh, six seven six eight with a seven foot wingspan, um, able to uh, uh, be very versatile on the defensive end. Probably can guard all five positions if the if the five is small enough. Um, and which can be useful. However, the pause for Kendall Brown is kind of the opposite of what Bryce McGowan's was. The pause on uh, Kendall is his offense. Um, can he contribute? Can he create for himself? Can he make uh, open shots? Now, we saw with the Golden State series is uh, Luka and Jalen were very good at creating for other guys, but we weren't hitting shots. Now, if you add in a guy like Kendall Brown, what that does is um, it will make driving to the basket even tougher for Luca, for Jalen, because Kendall Brown's shot just isn't there yet. So, uh, and we did see it at Baylor when Baylor was in uh, trying to make their run at the national championship game uh, during March Madness. Guys were sagging off him. Staying towards the lane, being in help side defense, or being help side defense, and kind of leaving him alone, kind of inviting Kendall Brown to shoot the ball. Now, if he was to get that together, a he wouldn't be drafted this low at 26, but he will he will be a very useful guy. Talking about all star type player, but he's just such a project right now that I I kind of hesitate to draft him because I think where the Mavericks are at. Uh, with their championship aspirations, we can't have so many roster spots devoted to projects on the team. Now we already have a project in Josh Green. We can't have another one, especially with reports saying that Mavericks are interested in bringing back um, Boban, Boban and Theo Pinson because for chemistry reasons. And, but we already know those guys didn't even play in the playoffs so if you want to use those guys as two-way deals or something and being open up more draft space but if we're talking about those guys taking up roster spots and then also having a kendall brown and a josh green that's four roster spots devoted to pure chemistry guys and two projects and those guys are probably not going to come in and contribute on a playoff rotation so i hesitate um but if he wants to get that together i'm all for it However, if some guys are around the same area as Kevin, as Kendall Brown, it is a Marjon Bochamp. Now he kind of has the same uh, same archetype as a, uh, as a Kendall Brown, uh, six 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 seven seven foot wingspan. Um, however, I do pause about his oh also good tools on good tools on the defensive end. It has good defensive upside and, and probably would be able to. Uh, contribute and guard multiple positions on the defensive end, um, but his offense is further along the way than a Kendall Brown. Uh, although that being said, his offense is still a little streaky. His shooting isn't all the way; it's not super efficient. Another guy that I would be way more excited about than a Kendall Brown is a Jalen Williams. It is well documented that the Dallas Mavericks wanted to upgrade the center position uh, after last year's run. And I believe Jalen Williams is just that. He's a far uh, better shot uh, rim protector than a 
Dwight Powell, even though he's not an elite, uh, he's not an elite rim protector. He, where he protects the rim and where he can do damage on that side of the ball is his ability to draw charges. He was very, he did that very well in the college, um, in the college circuit. Um, which what that does is it, if the offense is making is making their move and is trying to advance their way towards the basket, they will still have to keep one eye out for uh, at Jalen Williams to see where he's at. Is he going to try to you know block the shot or is he going to try to um, you know take the charge and risk me uh, getting another foul, getting a foul trouble, and of course getting a turnover. So I think Jalen Williams will be a lot more useful than a Kendall Brown and also Marjon Bochamp, although it's kind of the same archetype, is further along on offense. So I do see him at least in year one being able to contribute. Now let's go to another mock draft. So this too is another Yahoo Sports mock draft, but this one is done um, by Kirsten Peak. This one was done on June 7th. Uh, and let's see who Miss Peak or Mrs. Peak has the Mavericks selecting at 26. She has Kendall Brown again. Now, I already said my piece on Kendall Brown. Let's see who was available when the Mavericks, according to um, Mam over here, uh, who was available for the Mavericks to select at 26. If I was the one doing the selection. And we see at 27, just to pick right after, is a guy named Wendell Moore. Uh, Wendell Moore Jr. from Duke. Wendell Moore is about 6'5", 6'6", guard forward from Duke. Um, it is another guy that I talked about in my video. The thing that excites me about Wendell Moore is he is he's a jack of all trades, uh, master of none, but lack, he doesn't lack in any one particular asset of the game. He's able to come in day one and be able to contribute on the defensive end, being able to guard probably one through four, depending on who the four is, uh, and able to contribute on the offensive end more than just a catch and shoot. He can also play make for his teammates. He can also pull up and have the defense be um, off balance and not necessarily, you know, if a guy is, you know, just known as a catch and shoot, you just kind of run him off the three-point line and. <laughs> hope he tries to take it in the take it to the hoop because we know he's not that efficient. Wendell Moore is someone that I see has the ability to not only just catch and shoot, but play make and also take it to the rim and pull up from the mid range. F far more well rounded than a Kendall Brown, so I will envision him being able to step in uh, day one and possibly even have a playoff spot. Another guy who I envision to have the same thing. Is, or same type of uh, year one effect is a guy like Dalen Terry from Arizona. Six, seven guy, very long. Um, now he's also a, a, a D and three guy, but he also did flash a little bit of playmaking ability at, um, at Arkansas, I was about to say Arkansas, at Arizona. Um, and that's someone has, he's been, he's more useful, I see, as someone like Kendall Brown. I also talked about Walker Kessler. Um, kind of my thoughts about him is uh, I, I did like his um, uh, ability to block shots. Um, however, I am hesitant to draft him because uh, with the implementation of the illegal defensive call, is he going to be is he going to be able to stick with guys and get the and be able to protect the rim at the same kind of level uh, that he did in college? He averaged four. Point six or something blocks a game um but as we know these guys in the league are no joke these guys are not college players they are not moving at 110 miles per hour without any uh any inclination of doing anything else with the ball other than drive uh, driving to the hoop and trying to score uh guys in the nba are much more smarter than that what they would do is they'll try to switch on a guy like walker kessler and take him off the dribble now, where I and some other people have pauses, will he be able to stick with smaller guys, smaller forwards, smaller guards, and be able to protect the rim at the level that he did? Um, can he be used in a playoff setting? 
we don't quite know. And if he can't, if we're just drafting just because he's a center, that's the one that I'm I'm going to be a little hesitant on. So let's actually go to the next one. So this one's by Bleacher Report. And this one was Greg Shorts. Uh, this was published on June 9th, so yesterday. Um, and let's see who he has in Mavs drafting at 26. And he has perhaps the biggest steal of the draft falling all the way down to the Dallas Mavericks. Now, uh, this guy, Jalen Williams, is a guy that when I was doing the research for my last video, um, he was very gettable. However, because of the because of the combine, because of his measurables, he has shot up in the, in, in the ranks to a point where I don't think he's very gettable at 26. If he was to fall, I will be ecstatic. That will be for me, that's my guy who I want the Mavericks to draft at 26. What can Jalen Williams do? Jalen Williams is a guy, 6'6", 7'2", wingspan, who is a very good catch and shoot uh, player. However, he can also operate in the pick and roll very efficiently. We saw a, a slew of tapes from Santa Clara of him doing just that. He's also someone who has a little bit of a mid-range game. Very nice, controlled basketball game. I like the way he plays. He is someone that will be able to uh, take some pressure off of Luka and Jalen Brunson in terms of running the offense and also take some pressure off of uh, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith and Reggie Bullock in terms of guarding, you know, top tier guys uh, and playing 40 minutes a game, uh, doing just that in a playoff setting. He's a guy that I can see uh, probably to start off the season uh, being in the rotation, coming off the bench, but potentially towards the end of the season, possibly even moving into the starting lineup and taking uh, Reggie, Bullock, Reggie Bullock to the bench so Reggie will come in and provide his high-level DM3 play uh, for the Mavericks. I would be so excited if the Mavericks were able to draft a guy like Jalen Williams. It, I, I will literally be doing backflips. I might hurt myself, but it will be worth it. And that's all I have for you guys tonight. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you agree with my all my takes? Is there some other prospects who you would rather have their Mavericks selecting at 26? Uh, post them down below in the comment section. Also, like, share, subscribe to this page, and also follow us on Twitter. Follow the Dallas Prospect, at Dallas Prospect, and then you can also follow me too, at Any Unduka. Now, always remember guys, every legend was once a prospect. Could be even one of these guys. See you next time.